Over the years, Path of Exile has evolved to include many new items, currency types, and so much more. Along with it, GGG have introduced many quality of life purchases in form of stash tabs in an attempt to curb the bloat of stash space. But every fresh account still starts with the same base four tabs. This is how Path of Exile is, is meant to be played. This, this is how it... I've always wanted to see how feasible these tabs are from a veteran player's perspective, and if it could be a deal breaker for those wanting to play the game completely free to play. In this series, I aim to unlock all the map favorite slots and farm 50 Exalted Orbs on PoE's most popular game type, Softcore Trade, all with the base tabs. This is Fresh Off The Beach. Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here and Fresh Off The Beach is completed. Woo! Uh, we're very excited. Um, I'm recording this live on stream. We just finished it in about uh, three hours of an extra stream from where I last left you with the last video. And we have 50 Exalted Orbs in our stash tab right here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. We have unlocked all of the favored map slots. And honestly, this was a really, really, really fun experiment. Um, I just want to clarify a couple of things, then I'll get into how exactly I, I made all the currency and the strategies I went through. The first thing I want to clarify, because there's a bunch of people still commenting on every single YouTube video that comes out for this, uh, talking about like, well, this isn't really a new player experience, you probably should use like a worse build, or, or you know, you've got too much knowledge, it's not a new player experience. I have never said this is to uh, talk about how a new player tackles this. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I've been talking about how this is from a veteran's perspective. And for those who might be watching this video don't know what we're talking about, Fresh Off The Beach is about using the four standard tabs you get given, and then you just using one premium tab, so a $4 USD purchase, to be able to sell some stuff easily rather than, you know, listing it on the website forums, and to see if we can basically complete all of the endgame bosses and farm up 50 Exalted Orbs. And hey, I did. Initial thoughts. Uh, my initial thoughts on this um, is that it was a lot more enjoyable than I thought it was going to be. Now, there's probably a couple of factors to do with that. The first factor is I enjoyed the challenge and especially streaming this challenge uh, to viewers and everything like that who wanted to watch along. That made it a lot more fun. If I was doing this on my own in a dark room, you know, in my parents' basement or something like that, you know, uh, it probably wouldn't have been as fun. I probably would have wanted my stash tabs back pretty quickly, but it was actually pretty fun. The downsides uh, were about halfway through, I started filling up all of these tabs. They started to get really, really, really full, all right? They, the tabs started to get super full, and I would constantly have to be changing, um, you know, Jewelers to Fusings, Fusings to Chaos, Chaos to Exalted Orb. I could never really hold more than 300 Chaos at a time because of everything else that I that I have sitting here. Um, and it, it got a lot more painful than actually just having a currency tab where I could just have like, you know, 2000 Chaos and then have some of my X there as well and everything like that. Um, even just a single currency tab or a single map tab would have made this so much easier, but that wasn't part of the challenge, right? The challenge was to see if I could do this. Um, now, the build, I've talked about it, and it hasn't changed for about two to three episodes, but it is, uh, Gazzy's, uh, Mage Skeleton, uh, Necromancer. Just very quickly, basically a Flesh Crafter, a plus two wand, um, and then, you know, just, uh, Ashes of the Stars and then everything else, you know. My, a lot of my gems aren't actually even qualityed up, uh, they're just sitting on, like, 20 max. I do have a 21 Vial Summon Skeleton sitting right there. That's about it. Now, in terms of currency strategies... I was super simple in what I did, and you know, maybe a little bit boring, but it's something that I know how to make a lot of money from, and that is Expedition. Now, Expedition, I basically bought Expedition Scarabs for three Chaos each. I probably ran, in total, about 150 Expedition maps, um, and then maybe about 50 logbooks or something like that. We would drop maybe one logbook per three maps. I would be focusing on making sure I pick up as much Astragali as I can, so the way that we do that, or Astragali, any sort of reroll currency really, but Astragali sell in bulk for 40 to 1 Exalted Orb, and I sold maybe about 500 Astragali in the total uh, round of all of this. So we would run um, our uh, run our maps, farm all of the expedition there. If we got Gwenon, we'd just pick up all the Astragali and sell it in bulk. If 
we found Danig, we'd pick up all of the reroll currency, the burial medallions from Danig. We would reroll all of that ourselves. We would not sell it. And we'd pick up the uh, uh, pick up the Gwenum rerolls, pick up the Tujum rerolls. Rog, I didn't touch at all. You can see my expedition locker right here. I've just got a couple of Astragalis left, but I also have 150 scrap metal. If we got Rog in maps, we ran him, but we were just looking for logbooks. So we would run, uh, in this order of priority, we would run Danig logbooks because they were the most profitable with the uh, reroll currency that you would get back. And I was also able to, if I hit any of the Ulroth bosses from Danig, it's actually a challenge and I was able to sell that challenge so other people could come in, I could kill the boss and I could get one Exalted Orb a pop. I only got about four Exalted Orb in total from that method because I think we only hit two bosses and one boss, we actually failed. So we would sell uh, the Astragalis from Gwenon. We would roll all of the Tujin ourselves, Even though they're about four Chaos or maybe more per uh, Tujin reroll, you actually get much more currency back per uh, roll. I would say on average, it's like 10 to 12 Chaos per roll that you do with Tujin uh, that you do get back. The only other real currency strategy I did do uh, was actually rolling these clusters here. Towering Threat Vast Power. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. It's actually about 90 chaos average to roll this with alterations and regaling. And I did one with alterations and regaling. And then the rest of them I just did through harvest. We've specced into harvest on our atlas here while specking into expedition. So we specced into all of the chance to gain an additional grove and everything like that. But then also specking into all the uh, other harvest stuff that I do want right here. And then every time we come across, uh, across life rerolls, uh, we would roll these with life because Towering Threat has a pretty low weighting, but it does only have it has one of the only um, life modifiers for any of the uh, notables there. So the medium cluster, four or five passive between eye level 68 and 74, with area damage, Towering Threat and Vast Power sell for two Exalted Orbs each. So if you're rolling them for 90 Chaos from Alteration Spans, which we did one of them with, that's still one and a half x profit almost, and then um, uh, rolling them in Harvest, it's free if you're just finding the Harvest yourself. I made about a total of, I think I made six in total, but we only sold four of them, so it's only eight Exalted Orbs. Uh, right at the end here, we've still got two that we haven't sold, so, you know, uh, we hit we hit our currency before we actually uh, finished all of that. Honestly, those are pretty much the two ways that we made currency. Um, and you can see that in five uh, episodes, Hello. or, uh, yeah, five episodes, played on this character one day 15 hours i would actually take five to six hours off that um for being idling on this character um taking breaks all that kind of stuff so let's say 34 let's say 35 hours in total to uh farm what we did farm and uh from from the, the base character leveling the character through the story gearing the character we've still got about five six x worth of gear on this character here as well farewell um, and uh, farming up the uh, extra 50 Exalted Orbs with still a bunch of stuff in our stash. As you can see here, we're almost full everywhere. That's all I really have to say, guys. I hope you enjoyed the series. If you want me to do any other kinds of interesting series, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to be playing a bit of Gauntlet. I'm not going to be pushing myself if uh, we end up dying a lot and hating it. I might do one day, two days or something like that. And on the 6th of April, I'm going to be taking a 10-day break. I might be uploading some random VOD stuff because I'm going on a holiday to uh, the Northern Territory of Australia. So maybe I'll upload some fun VODs or something like that to YouTube for a little bit of uh, some different content. But who knows, I might just be taking the full time off. That's all I really have to say, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, Badger is out.